Greetings and salutations, race fans, motorsport lovers, new people, and others, and welcome to episode 102 um, of Waved Yellow. We are at Kailami, behind the scenes, backstage, they tell us, at the BMW M Fest. Very special guest tonight, Sheldon van der Linde and Sheldon van der Linde's DTM car. Welcome, Sheldon, and thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks a lot, Colin. Um, it's good to be back in South Africa. Uh, landed last Sunday, so it's always nice to be back here and uh, having a good chat to you guys. You may hear some noise. Welcome again. You may hear some noise in the background. This is Build Up for BMW M Fest. Earlier this week, Henk and I went to Huxky and Pan to watch Bloodhound SLR. And the guys at Bloodhound shared uh, what we did. Thank you very much. To all our new readers, viewers from England, uh, the United Kingdom, and Scotland, and America, and the rest of the world, thank you very much for joining us. Race day, and in particular, Waved Yellow, is a little bit of a, I suppose we work on 80% uh, fact and 20% entertainment. Sometimes it's 20% entertainment, sometimes uh, whatever. It's, it's called Waved Yellow because beware, be aware, Anything can happen. That's how we are. Thanks for joining us. 102, Sheldon. Last week we had Kelvin. Nine hours of hustle. Love the clothing range. How are the sales going? Yeah, our sales are going well so far. Um, I was actually walking out the house and my brother told me to put my shirt on for some promotion. So, um, yeah, it's going really well so far. Um, we're seeing a lot of interest from the local fans especially. So, um, it's always nice to have that back support, you know. Um, in Germany, of course, we have a lot of fans over there. But... There's nothing like home support, and um, that's why we wanted to launch this brand, um, just to get the, the image out there of our VDL Bros brand, and um, I think that's a perfect way to do so. It's quite amazing. You've got um, two brothers, three years apart, BMW, Audi, still the Germans, and then you live with Jordan Pepper, with the English Bentley driver. Three friends, three colleagues, three rivals, three different manufacturers. Must make for an interesting dinner table. Yeah, I know, it definitely does. Um, yeah, obviously, I'm, I'm with BMW this year. It's my first year with them. Um, it's, been a, it's been a dream come true for me. I've had so many, such a cool race program, you know. I did nine races in DTM this year. Then I did five in GT3. So, for me, it's, it was a bit of both worlds, and uh, I couldn't have asked for, for something better. So, for sure, when we get to Kailami now, the, the gloves are coming on, and um, the boys are going to fight hard for the, for the best local driver, for sure. And that's going to be interesting because you now back in a Schnitzer BMW and you haven't driven this track where this car, that's part of the secret with this car. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually one of the highlights of my year, to be honest. Um, driving this, this uh, DTM tech that we have here from Schnitzer Motorsport is, is going to be incredible. You know, we've got so many people that haven't seen this car in real life before. They only watch it on Supersport or whatever it may be. And um, I think yeah, for them to see it, to really hear the sound of this V8, because this is, this is still the V8 engine. Uh, is going to be incredible for them. So uh, really looking forward to rolling it out. But never mind just the sound. Looking at all the bits of carbon and the, the aero on this car, this thing is its unbelievable. The length of the tunnel starts halfway down the car. It's, it's really complex aero on it. I tell you, when you look at the bodywork, your neck already gets sore because it's got so much downforce. It's actually incredible. Before the season, I had to do a lot of neck training. Um, just to be able to keep up with the downforce and it's it's incredible car to drive I think even now like in aces you have a lot of high-speed corners We're really able to feel this and I think for the passengers it's going to be quite a ride I would say well, we're hoping that on Saturday we can sneak my ass into the this car and, uh, I want to take a handheld camera and hopefully I can still hold it as we go around the corners What sort of max G's do you put in braking and in cornering? Um, well, I don't have it at the top of my head, but I'd say about three Gs. Um, it's, it's a lot. I mean, it's obviously not as much as Formula One, but it's, it's a lot. And the thing about it is, you know, you've got long high speed corners where you really load your neck a lot. And, you know, you can really feel it after race, especially we've got two races on a weekend, two qualifying. So you're doing a lot of laps and uh, you can definitely feel it after race weekend. Now, your season this year was youngest uh, driver ever in uh, DTM, first South African, youngest BMW pole driver. There were highs, there were lows. It was a bit of a, you know, 13th in the championship may not have been what you wanted, but it's a team sport. And being a, the youngest BMW driver, sometimes you've got to work for the other guys. Yeah, well, um, it's been, a, like you said, a very up and down season. Um, 
It started off with my season highlights in Zolder for sure. I mean, when I got my first pole position, I was obviously over the moon. It was like a dream come true for me. Um, but since then, I have to say, even compared to Audi, the car has been struggling quite a bit. Um, for any other reason, we've been struggling a lot with straight line speed, um, which we haven't been able to, to make up the margin um, to the end of the season. So that's where we've been lacking most of the, of the time, I would say. Um, and then, yeah, it's just getting experience. You know, my, my qualifying has always been strong. I've been qualifying in the top 10 for most races. But unfortunately, the race is either bad start, you know, bad decisions where I don't have the experience of these top guys yet. So for me, it was a perfect learning year. I learned so much, probably more than I ever learned in ever, any other series. And the main things that um, main learning is A, the, the strategies and B, looking after the tires and seeing how they, they come and go through the, through the life of the tires. Yeah, that's another good point, actually. Um, the tire wear this year, because we have more power, uh, with the turbo engine that's been through the roof. I really, sometimes, you know, you get in the car and you, obviously you're coming from qualifying, so you're going straight into the race and you still have that qualifying mentality of giving it everything on the power, you know, wheel spinning the car. But that's where you need to kind of draw it back a bit and be clever. And that's where the guys like Rene Russ, Marco Wittmann, they're really, really good at that. And that's where you see the difference in the races. We, you mentioned seeing DTM on TV. And one of the cool things is to see the in-car um, the in-car footage and how you guys work and the, the driving position and the stuff you fiddle with. Talk us through some of the, uh, the things we see. There's the brake by or the big arrow lever in the front. Why is it so big and like that? I don't know. I mean, DTM is everything about precision, you know. The, the Germans, as you would always say, um, they, they super, everything needs to be perfect, you know. And obviously, it needs to be visible for the driver because you probably mid-corner and you could still adjust it, you know. So, it needs to be as visible as possible and as big as possible for you to easily access it. Um, and I think that's why it's all different kinds of colors um, and it's that big, especially. Okay, so we've cleared that out. Then Now, on the dash, you've got a whole lot of lights. Um, you've got the revs across the top. And then there's some other, like, purpley, bluey lights that come on and into corner and outer corner. What are those about, and how do you manage them? So those are actually the, the slip angle lights. So you can basically follow how much slip the rear wheels are having, or especially if you're locking the front wheels, you can basically follow on each side which wheel is locking. Because obviously you can't see. You know, you're sitting very low in the car, and um, you can't see the smoke or anything. So... You need these lights. I mean, if I had to drive without these lights, I think it would almost be impossible. I remember speaking to one of my teammates, and um, one of their systems actually broke during the race, and he was actually absolutely in nowhere because without this function, you really can't feel which wheel is locking and you know which way the, the car is going. So it's very tricky. So you're basically driving using lights as a, as a modulation, both for braking and acceleration. Exactly. Um, so, like I said, it's more for, for saving the rear tires. You know, you really follow them because basically if you have too much slip angle on the rear, you have a lot of red lights and that shows you that you're killing the rear tire. And in the beginning of the season, I was always in the red and by the end, I was always in the white. So that was, that was a positive for me. And just from a driving point of view, you, don't, you clearly don't look at the lights all the time. They, it's more peripheral vision and you, you used to to seeing them just in the periphery. Exactly. That's also why they're so bright, you know, and why the whole display is so big. Like I was saying, is it's the same with the brake bias. You know, when, you, when you're turning and you're in a corner, it's, it's easier for you to see in your peripheral vision than to actually focus on one thing. Because if you just focus on one thing, you lose uh, track of what's going on. Do you do um, eye exercises to improve the peripheral vision and, and particularly uh, the, the, the vision of... of objects closing in on you it's racing that is a original 530 eddie kaizen bmw gary is gone Th these are some of the cars that are on display at the bmw m fest man i've got i've got like gooseys where were we oh eye exercises do you do anything to improve your vision not specifically to be honest but um, we have like a fitness camp at the beginning of the year, which is called Formula Medicine. And they have all these kind of different training regimes. And it's very mental. You know, they focus on the mental side of motorsport because in the end, I think the, the mind is very strong and it kind of relates directly to what, what actions you're doing. So I think that's always a, a very good help. And I might even go back now in the winter just to basically continue this whole rhythm. Otherwise, you lose it in the winter, you know. Like we've got six months off now, so you've got to keep going. 
Interesting. Colvin said exactly the same thing about the, the mental balance um, and, and being mentally really, really tough. And I suppose having an, a, a stable environment and a happy environment where you're living at, um, in Germany at home helps a lot? Oh, of course. I mean, like you said earlier, we, we're living with Jordan as well, and that really helps keep the whole momentum up. It keeps the vibe up. You know, when one of us have a bad race, we kind of lift the other one up. And um, it's just super cool because I can't imagine what it would be like after a really bad race weekend to go and sit in my apartment doing nothing alone, you know. So for me, this is actually one of the best, especially this year when times were quite tough. Um, I always had them joking around, you know. It, it helped me a lot. And who's, who's the better cook now? Jordan, for sure. Every morning I wake up and Jordan asks me what I want in my omelette. So uh, he's well trained, let's say. <laughs> and are you still the music guru? I'm always the music guru. Actually, I get it from Gennaro. Um, Gennaro is the, the all-rounder, so I'm trying to follow in his footsteps. You know. Well, he's the world's fastest DJ. And hold on, we are going to talk to Gennaro Bonafidi, who is head of M Brand. He's the main M. He's the main m- man for BMW in Joburg. Gary, we did say if you've got any questions or for Sheldon. Write them in the comments, and Gary will will read them out to us, Unfortunately, so we can a ask. For Sheldon, it's just a lot of people asking Kelvin, who's online watching, if uh, Sheldon is actually telling the truth or is he speaking cuck? <laughs> but uh, I mean, you you wouldn't have have any reason. I'm being the. Do they treat you differently because you're the youngest um, in the D- uh, DTM paddock? Well, I think you've kind of got to prove yourself, you know. Uh, you know, coming in as a new driver, for sure, they, they know you're something, something special because you, you've ended up there on merit. But at the end of the day, you still need to kind of prove yourself to them. And I think by the end of the year, I really started, you know, earning their, let's say, trust or whatever it is, you know. Because in the beginning, they kind of try and walk over you. And I, I made a point not for them not to do that. So... You were involved in a couple of, how shall we put it, robust moves where you punted your teammate off as well, didn't you? Yeah. Or another BM went yeah. flying. Yeah, well, uh, that was with Timo Glock in, in Nürburgring. Um, obviously, it's not a nice thing to have, you know. You never want to take your teammate out or whatever, but obviously these things are not on purpose. Um, and I think they understood it, so BMW have been very supportive of that. Um, but you are putting your mark down and saying, listen, I'm not the little kid that you're going to push around. Exactly, you know, I'm there, I, I really want to win, and um, I, I'm trying to make it clear that I'm not there to do the support role, you know, so um, that's why these things have been happening, and also with Jensen Button in the last, last Hockenheim race, um, it got pretty frisky out there, he called me the dirtiest driver he's ever seen. That's quite a compliment, I think, you know, coming from that... Uh a world champion Formula One driver would um, spend spend enough time and be worried enough to call you that. Yeah, well, the media actually interviewed me afterwards. Uh, you know, the, the cameras were there. And um, I, I sort of said, at least he knows my name now, you know, uh, Formula One world champion. So it was really cool to race against him. But obviously the media blow everything out of perspective. And I, I even spoke to him on the grid on Sunday. I said, look, um, it was not that bad at all. And he said, no, 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 not at all. And... Um, Obviously, the media just just love a story, so that's all right. Damn media! The that race that you were in was the f- the experimental race with bringing those um, supercars from super series from Japan. Super GT. Super GT. Yeah. Oh, I'll get it wrong. Yeah. One day, if I'll get all the facts right. So you got Super GT there. What is it? What is the feeling amongst the Japanese contingent and the German contingent, and how it could work going forward? Well, I have to say from the outside, you know, if you look at the way that the pits and stuff were set up, it's not on the Germans' level. I mean, it's, it's clear. You can see the way the Germans work, and then you go to the Japanese, and you kind of see the way that they work. So uh, with all due respect to them, I think they do a great job. Um, obviously, it's not easy for them to bring their containers and come, come over to Germany and compete with us. Um, but, yeah, I think they did a very good job. Um, and, yeah, like I said, it was cool racing with Jensen. We had some other guys, Super GT champion as well, so it was, was very cool. And uh, the way forward, you would, you'd know more better than we do. What's it in 2021 that looks like the com- um, f- uh, combining of the rules? 
Well, that's the plan. Um, it's it's been running very slowly. I have to say, this plan has been going for the last five years already. So they really, you know, Gerhard Berger is trying with his team to really bring them in. Um, but I think it's not such an easy thing, you know, because they're completely happy with their series in in Japan, and it's basically to see who's going which way, you know. And I think none of them are willing to go either way. So I think that's a problem at the moment. But I don't see it uh, not working. I think it's a great. Uh, prospect for the future and I think uh, it will grow a DTM even bigger than what it is now. Now your fitness regime, you know, there are other drivers walking around saying that they're walking 28 kilometers. I think it's absolutely rubbish. Um, your fitness regime while you're here, what are you doing? Well, um, to be honest, I'm not, I'm not as hard as I'm meant to be at the moment. Um, I've just been taking a week off to just kind of relax and, and get back into the, into the rhythm. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely in the gym with my brother. We're doing a lot of running, you know, we're doing a lot of heat training, especially for the Kyle Army 9 hour now. We, I think it's going to be quite a tough race because if we're doing uh, double or triple stints, you know, three hours, hours at a time, it's going to be pretty tricky. Is that looking like it's a strategy? Um, two driver changes and triple stinting everything? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say triple stint necessarily unless you've really got a big variance in the, in the driver pairing, but I would say... Uh, you'd probably start with a single, let's say, because obviously the first stint is normally the most intense. Um, and especially in the heat of the day, you know, I think we started at one o'clock or something. So you would start with a single stint and then move on to double, double, double all the way to the end. It's going to be an exciting race. If you haven't got your tickets for Kyle Army 9 Hour, do yourself a favor and go and get them. It is going to be magnificent. A new era of entertainment and motorsport. Gary, you got a question. Yeah, Mark van uh, Wilmsdorf uh, Dolph asks a question. What are the chances of DTM ever coming to South Africa? Oh, yeah, even Janora's laughing in the background there. Um, I think that's, uh, that's a dream come true for me, especially, you know. Um, I, I get to have a taste of it this weekend, but it's still not the same as really racing it and having your home support here, you know. Um, but I would say that the Kailami 9 hour is pretty close to to that so in terms of that i think uh, we we can be very happy with the current situation here now your role this weekend is essentially taxi driver and in this car shell helix van check it out it is it is a work of art it is truly magnificent had a brief look around it um you spent many laps in this car and you get it a bit hooligan and and have some fun with it Oh, for sure. I mean, we're going to get it as sideways as possible. Um, I hope the the passenger bought their big boy pants because it's going to get rowdy in there. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Like I said, you know, just the sound. I think the first time I got into a DTM car last year in the young driver test, my I had my earphones in and uh, still I, I was completely deaf when I got out. So I'm looking forward to what the passengers are going to say. Awesome. Hopefully we'll manage to sneak in there. Sheldon? Thank you very much for, I know you've got a, a schedule, even though the schedule is downtiming and, and you know, uh, relaxing before, before the, the hype of the nine hour. Not many days away now. Thanks so much for taking time out. And uh, get that clothing range, the local range here for the guys. I'm sure that many guys would buy it. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to, to seeing a lot of shirts at the Kailami Kailo Nine Hour. That's always our goal. Um, we will be making flags as well, so hopefully there's going to be a lot of VDL flags in the crowd. But um, yeah, thanks a lot to you guys for having me. It's always a pleasure being on the show, and uh, thanks a lot. Uh, hope to see you guys probably this weekend. Awesome stuff. We're going to be here. Sheldon, thank you so much. Sheldon, Have you. a good evening. And now the set changes because we move our latest pit boxes and uh, we get somebody else to stand on it I mean to sit so finally Gennaro Bonafidi head of M in South Africa yeah so basically head of BMW M and uh, driving experience for BMW South Africa congratulations that's quite a yeah get the posture right yeah. you've got to you've got to get you must be have the abs out looking super so everything is all right yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> we uh, BMW M fest we're going to be streaming on Saturday and Sunday and talking to some of the guests, some of the drivers, having a look at some of the cars. Um, you're expecting big crowds here, 25, 30,000 people. What's BMW M Festival all about? So, it started in 2017. Uh, the first one we ever did in 2017, we thought, ah, if we get six to 8,000 people, we, we're doing well. We're putting on a bit of a show with some hot labs, some, some exciting things for the crowds, uh, music festival as well. That was the main theme. 
we sold out uh, 20,000 people over two days in, in, in 2017. It was absolutely unreal. So we thought, well, two years later, let's do it again. So this time, at least we knew what we were in for. We, we tried to prepare a little bit better. But with big events like this, you can never really prepare. I mean, it's, it's event week now, and, and it's been, yeah, absolutely insane. Well, when we arrived, we, the pits at Kyle Army look like you've never, ever seen them. The set building industry in Joburg is smiling. Um, it, is, it looks quite spectacular. There are pop-up dealerships, there are special finance deals, I believe, and special deals on cars. Can we do a deal on this M4 GD4 car for me? Sure, no problem. I mean, uh, if you've got enough bucks, we can sell anything to you, Colin. Well, that's a problem, eh? Yeah, I know, exactly. No, listen, the M Festival, we cannot wait. And so stoked to have Sheldon here. I mean, 2017, we had Tom Blomqvist. Um, obviously, a great to have a DTM driver then. But now, to have Sheldon, our home hero, uh, in his Shell car, M Festival brought to you by Shell V-Power. Everything just fell literally in our laps. It is super, eh? It was super, yeah. So, um, yeah, loads of race taxis in the GT4, in the DTM car. We've got hot laps from our driving experience instructors, 30 cars doing hot laps in all sorts of M cars, the new X3M, X4M, uh, M4CS, m You've even got the new 1 Series. Correct. I was about to say something else, but and are they, it's only M cars here. Correct. So, so we have a whole lot of test drive cars. Um, up, up on the handling track, we've got about 90 test drive cars. So the public can actually drive the car around the handling track with, a, with an a instructor next to them. And then the hot lap, 30 cars. But let me tell you something about the new 1 Series. Uh, I drove the new M135R last week. It is actually phenomenal. It's really surprising. I Brief specs on the car. How much? Yeah, 225 kilowatts, 500, horsepower, 500 newton meters of torque, uh, 0 to 104.7, 4.8. So it's, it's as strong as a Golf R. And, and can you put an Acropovic pipe on it and make it go pop, pop, pop? I think we're coming to that. So we'll have M Performance parts on it. So the, the one actually here at the festival is fully kitted in M Performance parts. Um, yeah, we're launching our brand new X5M, X6M here. Um, we'll have a very, very special car upstairs in a closed room. So uh, the top of our M range, actually. Um, very, very, very special car. That's something to do with a figure between seven and nine. Correct. So uh, it's really, really, and then of course we have a, a really cool um, pinnacle of motorsport section. So this is something that we really want to push. We have a massive, massive project, the 530 MLE as well as a 530R racing car, which you spoke about earlier. We have those two on show. The MLE, that's the original 535 homologation special car that was done for Group 1 racing, but only in South Africa. So, so the Germans were upset about 100%. that. 100%. So, so 100 530 MLEs were made, um, and this one is number 100, um, which is goosebump stuff. I mean, to find it, we, we found the car lying in a dumpster somewhere, and it's just a shell, and we've completely rebuilt the whole thing um, to be here as number 100. We even got the old Roslyn staff who produced the car in the 1970s to come back and, and reproduce the car. It is a and if you, go to, if you go to YouTube, you can check out the story of the build of the car and, and how they go. I mean, it's nice to, to record uh, bits like that for history. Nostalgia is a real thing. We also have the, the, the Batmobile, the 3-liter three, three CSL, which is a phenomenal car. Um, and the 530 Eddie Kaizen car. Correct, yeah, correct. We've also got that. We've got a 745 Art car. So that's also, all these cars are specific to South Africa. So proper iconic BMW race cars. I yeah. Shadowline, the Winfield. Uh, Tony Vianney's Winfield. Tony Vianney's Winfield. So really, we have absolutely everything. You've been running uh, up and down the pit lane. How many kilometers? <laughs> Almost 30, I think. It's been it's Almost been 30. Minute. Typical racing driver. When you say to him, how fast was you? Was you and he nah. did like a, a 130.9. He said, nah, 30. Um, 28.3. <laughs> that, that's, um, it's, it's about accurate. Now, can you put a bit of effort in and get to 30? I'll try. I'm sure the Saturday and Sunday will be over 30. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Saturday, VIP and VVIP sold out. Um, Sunday is almost sold out on VIP and VVIP. General access tickets are still available. Where do, where do we uh, guys get tickets? So, bmw.com uh, or bmw.c.za forward slash mfestival. Um, and you can buy from Howler. It's 200 rand a general access ticket. To come in, your child under 16 is free. So, literally, for a family of four, 
400 Rand to come out for an amazing day. You can watch the rugby live. You can watch. We have all sorts of music artists. We have an international DJ, Zonderling, coming for Saturday. Are you going to get on the decks there and spin yeah, a bit? No, maybe at the after party. Um, but yeah, Sunday. Um, but the after party is always super secret, yeah? Super secret, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Sunday we have Ricky Rick at Nasty C. So we've got some really big artists. Uh, Good Luck will be here as well. DJ Fresh, Kent. I really I don't know what else you do this weekend. To be honest, I mean, obviously I'm biased, but it's just showing the power of the brand. And I think that's something that we didn't realize. Quite, I mean, you justify putting on a show like this because this doesn't come cheap. And you justify doing this because it involves the dealers and their customers and potential customers. And it's a different way of showing off cars to walking down Jewel Street and checking them out. Exactly. So that's the thing. You know, we, we realized that some of the other motoring festivals in South Africa were more of a showcase. Ouch. No, I'm no, I mean, it was always product related. But here you are involved and in love with one brand. And you can buy a car on site. I mean, we've got, I think, 180 cars available for purchasing on the weekend. Come with your... Bank card, swipe, we check your F&I with financial services, you can walk away with a car on the weekend at an outrageous deal. So this, again, it, it, it all links in. It's, it's a Have you got a competition to see who can sell the most cars? Yeah, of course. We're, comp we're competing against ourselves. No, so, no, no, I mean uh, amongst the dealers and, and <laughs> the guys who move it. Because um, BMW South Africa, you can't really sell cars to the public. It has to move through a dealer, doesn't Correct. it? Not, not yet. So we have something. Not yet. Oh, so it's coming. Online shopping's coming. Correct. Yeah. So we, we're, uh, we're, we're piloting that next year. So something that we really are looking forward to is uh, starting direct to customer. Um, so we, uh, we have to prepare for this. The uh, dealers must be pooing in their pants yeah. with that. You know what? I think it's so incentivized to the dealers. It's, 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 we've taken a really long, hard look at this. Uh, it started 15 months ago, this journey. It comes from BMW Germany. Um, they've thought about absolutely everything and now we have to implement it. So I think the dealers are really on board now. They're really excited for them. It gives a new look in life. It's about service delivery. It's about keeping your and, customers. And, and, and service as in servicing the car as well. Correct, correct. So they keep their after sales business. They keep their used car business, which I think for them is a real uh, money generating business. Um, but also it's about actually customer experience. So this is all about the customer. What does the customer want to do? I mean, in 2019, you, uh, why not go on the visualizer, pick your car, see what is in the market, select it and buy online and can you um, get customized colors and trims and yeah. stuff like that yeah, so, so there'll be infinite number of cars available correct so through bmw individual which is part of the m brand you can customize your color to make it concrete silver if you want when are they going to specify as standard fitment indicators in bmws <laughs> <laughs> I know that was harsh. You, still, you sure you still want to get in this weekend? Yeah, I do. But I had to ask for that. <laughs> it's a joke. I joke. BMW drivers are some of the best drivers in the world. They are super good. Yeah. Look at Sheldon. Gary, you've got a question. Yeah. Uh, a lady by the name of Nicolette, uh, Nicolette Staliano asks, any free tickets for Impfest? <laughs> We've been running competitions actually with 947. So um, I think there might still be a couple available for 947. So just listen to the radios, look at online, our digital platforms. There's still a couple that you could potentially win. Well, there you go. Easy, easy one. What time does the action start? Tomorrow? I'm told there's press. Yeah, somebody just said there's press. But we're not journalists. So we'll be here working on uh, Saturday and Sunday. So tomorrow's a journo day, and then Friday, what happens? So yeah, we started off on Monday and Tuesday with driving experience. So our M intensive course, so our, our top customers who have seven ME had a driving experience. Today we had our corporate uh, partners doing driving experience. Tomorrow is local media and, and press. Obviously we're launching the new X3M, X4M, showcasing X5, X6M, also brand new to come out next year, as well as the one series and the new three series. And then Friday is actually international media. So this is something really big for us that the, our, our press department got it. The BMW M Festival signed off as an international journalist event. So there's, I think, 60 media from all over the world flying in for this event for Friday and, and for Saturday, which is absolutely incredible for us. And ultimately, and so fr um, Saturday and Sunday is public. What time does it open? What time does it shut? So uh, public days opens at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning on both days. Uh, and Saturday it closes at 10. And Sunday, I think, closes at 8, if I'm not mistaken. So action-packed from the word go. The first hot lap starts, I think, at 9.30. So uh, get in, get out, be squared. Enjoy the festival. Come enjoy our brand. I mean, we have such an amazing brand. It's, it's so powerful. And uh, when you get here, you'll see. You'll see exactly what you were talking about from a, from a set build perspective. Earlier, the question was asked, how long are we going to talk for? And <laughs> I said, I don't know. There's only one guy I know who can talk yeah. more than I do. 
Gennaro the Giraffe, the fastest DJ in the world. But all of this thing, this festival, rests on ultimately you, the responsible person. And on your, your job interview, there are a couple of KPIs. Are you confident you can deliver it? No, it's not all on me. We've got an incredible team. I mean, I'm not even at the forefront. We, we've got an events team that's phenomenal. We've got our, obviously our management, which are behind us, the vision, the craziness. We've had an incredible agents partners. I mean, our agencies here are visionary. So we're, we're a collective team. I love how you've just gone and shared it. You'll, you've, no, you've, you have to. You're a proper corporate animal. You've got a good future in corporate. You don't do something like this by yourself, Colin. You know, we, we are car builders. We are, we are car lovers, car sellers, uh, and, and, and we are a mobility company, and we don't build sets. So, you know, we need to involve people that do that for the living. Otherwise, you don't get the perfect product. So and these sets are... They are super. Yeah, super. So that's Talk why we've, we've asked Sheldon to bring his car because at least he's the professional driver. So Talking about driving and professional drivers, nine hours coming yes. up. And um, how's your training going? And because you, you will, of course, will be in a well, apart from your twenty-eight thousand three hundred and forty-seven steps. And remember, they call him giraffe because he's so tall, and that means so you twenty-one k's almost. Yeah. So oh, almost a step I is, a is a meter. I was going to I was going to give you more than a meter for a step. Yeah, thanks God. If it if it at least. Okay, so you uh, the drive's done and sealed and basically now it's to learn the manual of the car which you pretty familiar have done two races in it and build that excitement, hey? Yeah, I think it's going to be awesome. You know, obviously there's there's two factory BMW teams here, so Sheldon's team Schnitzer and then Volkanost. So they've got full pro lineups uh, and factory teams. We're in the second Volkanost car. Uh, it looks like we'll be entering pro am for now, which is really cool. Um, and I think myself and Michael van Rooyen are going to have a really good time. I think, you know what, for me, it's going to be awesome because I know the track, I know the car. So I really want to at least see for myself how far we can get up and, and, and to help, obviously, Michael because... He knows the track. For him, I don't think it'll take him too long to learn the car. Um, We've changed his name now. From now on, Michael von Rooyen is known as Ignatius because that's the way it, you, on the entry form, it's Ignatius Michael von Rooyen. And Michael, if you're watching or anybody knows Michael, please wish him seriously good luck. This weekend, they're racing at Red Star. It's a championship, the showdown of GTC. He's two points in it. And that are we, the Toyota that he's driving has done some good stuff in, in GDC this year. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's good. And GDC, obviously, it was a big challenge in the beginning of the year, but I think they've, they've managed to settle down now, you know, and, and apparently some exciting stuff for next year. Some new they cars. They say. Yeah, some new cars, some new shapes, some new drivers. So that's fantastic, you know, and I really, I really wish them all the best. For me, obviously, I have no idea what I'm doing next year, but we'll keep pushing and, and, and see what we can do. Maybe we can do some more stuff overseas, hopefully. Uh, we're holding thumbs for you. Gennaro, good luck for M Festival. We'll be here bright and early on Saturday morning, and we're going to stream a whole lot of stuff from cars to drivers to people, and for those of you who can't be here, but do yourself a favor. If nothing else, get your ass here and look at this car. It's got, we'll do a walkthrough on it over the weekend. It is beautiful. It's a work of art. Gennaro, thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you, Colin, and good luck to you guys too. We'll see you Saturday, Sunday for a bumper weekend. Eh? Awesome. And that, boys and girls, we didn't even get to talk about this beautiful M4 GT4. GT4 race car comes out of the factory. We will talk about this over the weekend. It is a factory-built racing car that soon you can go online uh, and order from your dealer. From us... Episode 10, how many Gary? 102. 102, yeah. 102 of Waved Yellow. Thanks for watching. Join us again next week. Be fast, be safe, have fun. Cheers.